So today I have this Samsung 60 inch LCD LED TV. This one is a UN60EH6003. And just uh, out of coincidence, I happen to have another one, the same exact model, UN60EH6050. Well, it's not the same model, but it's a very close model. And uh, they're both very similar. And the problem is. I can go ahead and turn the set on. I'll get the melody. And I'll get the backlight to come on. But looking up here at the screen, you can see the backlight's lit, but I don't have any video whatsoever. So looking here, let's take some voltage measurements on the TCON board. Got my meter here. I don't know if you can see it very well or not. But this is the fuse leading in from the uh, main board. Uh, it takes its power from the LVDS connector. It's got 12 volts. Measure the other side, make sure you've got approximately the same voltage. And then over here on some of these coils, let's look and see what we've got. 0.3 volts there. 0.287. I've got zero on that one. 0.994 on this one. And let's measure on these two little caps here, output filters. Now this chip right here, I've had some problems with it in the past. It is the switch mode power supply for this timing controller board. And uh, like I said, I've had some issues with it. And uh, I've already troubleshot this out and determined that that is the problem with this board. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And we'll see if we get better results. Okay, so here's the chip that we're gonna end up replacing, ISL9860. And um, what I've got here is a hot air blower. And so I'm just gonna use the tip of this hot air blower to heat up the chip. It's gonna take about 30 seconds to a minute or so. And uh, the hot air I have set at 350 degrees Celsius. Let it heat up for a minute. It's just starting to move. It's almost ready to lift off. There we go. Hard to see on the camera, but the chip has a heat sink on the bottom of it that is soldered down as well. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is add some flux to the area that I just pulled the chip off of. You can see it's still flowing, still warm, so the flux is flowing nicely. And next I'm going to prep the pins. By just removing the solder peaks. And if necessary, I could add more solder to it, more fresh solder, which I might end up doing. I'm going to spread the solder around that the factory left me in the middle. That'll aid as the heat sink when the new chip goes on there. So I've got the new chip right here, it's ready to go, hasn't been soldered on. 
I'm going to pre-tin the leads on this chip. And it's going to be really hard to see, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of flux to it. The flux makes the solder uh, a little bit wetter and it helps uh, remove the peaks as you solder. So I'm just going to add flux around all four corners of the chip. So I've got the chip uh, clamped in the end of an alligator clip and so I'm just going to add some solder to it and I'm just going to go over the pins. You can see how they get nice and shiny and that's going to preload them with solder so they take to the solder that's on the board much easier. And if you get a peak or if you get a couple that stick together, you can take the tip that's nice and clean add some fresh solder and you can just wipe it off and you'll end up with something that looks it looks better in person than on the video but I'm going to do that to all four sides of the chip okay so I've got the chip placed into position and I'm going to go ahead and start heating it to take the solder I went ahead and I've turned up my heat to 375 Celsius and um, I've had pretty good success using this system and I haven't uh, damaged any chips. And I'm not going to get as close as I did last time. I'm going to heat it up nice and gently. And I'm going to try to uh, apply some heat to the board at the same time. Chip's going to want to walk until it starts to take a little bit of solder. Now that I've got it up to temperature, I'm just going to go ahead and lower it, lower the tip, get a little bit closer to the chip, make sure it takes solder really good. It looks good, the centering looks good, the placement is good. So I'm going to let it cool off for just a moment. And then uh, I've got a flashlight here, I can take a little bit closer look at the, uh, the pin placement, everything looks really good on it. And what I'm going to do, it's going to be hard to show on the video once I get my tip clean, is I'm going to go and I'm going to touch up every pin one by one. It's just a very slow process. Now the tip I have is an extremely fine tip. And then after I get done, I'm going to wash all the flux off of the board. This whole chip is about six or seven millimeters square, so it's very small. Okay, so I've got my board all cleaned up. It's all washed and ready to go. Let's go ahead and power the set on now. There it comes. There's the backlight slit, so let's go ahead and check our voltages. Once again, the input voltage on the fuse, 12 and a half volts. Last time we had about 0.2 or 0.3 volts here. Once again, I got 12 and a half here. Check on this little coil right here. 3.3 volts. That's L7102. L7101. I've got 1.04. And it looks like L302. I've got exactly one volt. So check those voltages. If you don't have them, more than likely this chip's bad. Uh, I've got 35 volts on these two capacitors over here. Um, if you're having issues, you might want to change those caps also. I've had, had uh, rumors that uh, they can cause premature failure. Uh, the biggest thing I think causes this issue is if you notice on the inside when you took the timing control cover off, it's got these three, they're thermally conductive rubber sheets 
and uh, when the thing's on there, they're arranged in such a fashion that they're going to cool the uh, main video processor and a sub video processor as well as the RAM chip. It's going to cool those. I would recommend getting a fourth one of these and placing it on top of this power supply chip because it does generate a little bit of heat and I do believe that is uh, subject to premature failure. Uh, just uh, for note, the timer controller board number is BN95-00628C. Alright, so here's a view of the screen from the bottom looking up. It's laying flat, so I've got video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video of the uh, timing controller board failure on this Samsung 60-inch LED LCD TV. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. I appreciate your views, your comments, your support. I try to answer them, but I haven't had much time lately. Everybody have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.